Will we see Pikmin 4 on Switch? Or will it have a different impact site? The Pikmin franchise has, historically, been a critically acclaimed series of games with sales and popularity that has never quite matched its quality, charm, and potential. Pikmin's creator, Shigeru Miyamoto, intended for the series to be the next Mario, which is another one of his creations and the flagship franchise for Nintendo. However, lagging sales and infrequent releases have obviously prevented this from happening. For the passionate fans of the Pikmin series, this is the bitter truth. Regardless of how much care and attention Pikmin fans have for these games, they just did not tend to sell well historically. This unfortunate reality, however, could be about to change, and I couldn't be any more excited. My name is Vantage Emblem, and today, we're going to briefly analyze the sales data of the Pikmin series, recent rumors about the games, and trends that have, in the past, caused Nintendo franchises to finally bloom from dormancy to determine if there is any hope for Pikmin 4 on Nintendo Switch. This video will be in two parts, so let's start today by looking at sales. Let's start with a baseline. The original Pikmin sold 1.6 million copies, a solid start for a franchise, but it's nothing too impressive in the grand scheme of things. Luigi's Mansion, which saw its first entry around the same time as Pikmin, debuted with 3.33 million sales. Though, Luigi's Mansion was a spin-off from an already established franchise, and Pikmin was an entirely new IP. The most recent mainline entry of the Pikmin series, Pikmin 3, sold only 1.27 million units. This meant that the game sold better than Pikmin 2, its predecessor, with 1.12 million units sold, but worse than the original Pikmin. This is where the series' dormancy began. Given how long this game was in development, with the game originally intended to release on Wii, eventually releasing on Wii U, this doesn't bode well for the overall profitability of this game. Development takes time and money, and longer development usually needs higher profits for it to truly pay off. Given that Pikmin 3 released to modest sales on a console that itself performed poorly, following Pikmin 3's original release, Pikmin was shelved for nearly a decade. There was a spin-off released in 2017, but it wasn't well received by the established Pikmin fanbase and performed worse than any prior Pikmin game, not even managing to crack half a million sales. This did not bode well for a mainline Pikmin entry. In 2020, Pikmin 3 was re-released in the form of an enhanced port with added content on the much more popular Nintendo Switch console, seven years after its initial release. According to recent sales figures, Pikmin 3 Deluxe has sold 2.04 million copies on Switch, making Pikmin 3 Deluxe easily the best-selling Pikmin game. Considering the re-release game was released at a full $60 price, this means that it made a considerable amount of money in comparison to both the original Pikmin 3 release and the releases of past Pikmin games, especially when you take into account that all releases of Pikmin 1 and 2 retailed at $50 rather than Pikmin 3's $60 price point. Taking in both the Wii U and Switch versions of Pikmin 3, the game has sold a combined 3.31 million copies, a much more favorable number for this title. If the sales of Pikmin 3 Deluxe alone hadn't made Pikmin 4 worth it financially, this figure should, especially considering games like Fire Emblem Three Houses sold 2.87 million lifetime reported sales, and that game exploded the popularity of a growing and healthy franchise, to the point where there are rumors of two new mainline Fire Emblem games being released in development concurrently, and a second Warrior spinoff just announced. All of this for Switch. Even if all 1.27 million original Pikmin 3 users double-dipped and themselves bought Pikmin 3 Deluxe, that's still about three-quarters of a million new potential fans trying the game for the first time. It is well documented online that many Pikmin 3 users did not choose to double-dip, citing the $60 price point for a game they had already played to be too much. For some, Deluxe added enough new content to justify buying again, in addition to being portable and on the Switch, but this wasn't enough for every past user to want to buy the game a second time, and frankly, this only further cements the volume of new players Pikmin 3 Deluxe has attracted. Taking all of this into account, how would a potential sequel do? If Pikmin 4 were to release soon, with a great deal of hype about it, we could easily see a number much greater than 3.31 million sales, as old fans who didn't buy Pikmin 3 Deluxe will return, in addition to the new fans brought on by Deluxe and new players willing to try a Pikmin game for the first time due to the game's marketing. If Nintendo hypes it up and markets it and things go incredibly well for it, it could sell perhaps from 4 to 5 million copies, beating out games like Paper Mario Origami King and even Age of Calamity. This is not 
Even taking into account Pikmin Bloom's 2 million plus downloads, bringing in renewed media interest to the franchise for its 20th anniversary. In other words, provided Pikmin 4 releases on Switch and in a timely manner, Pikmin can be set. And this wouldn't be the first IP rapidly expanded by the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch is, in many ways, an IP-growing machine. Look no further than the expansion of Fire Emblem, we discussed earlier, and the growth of the already popular franchises, such as Animal Crossing, in addition to what we're seeing with Metroid Dread right now. Luigi's Mansion, which we have been comparing to Pikmin throughout this video, grew to sell over 11 million copies at the time of this recording. It's clearly not just the biggest Nintendo IP that are given a chance to find new heights on Switch. It's all franchises Nintendo brings to the platform, provided they do so with love and care. We're seeing Kirby and Pokemon finally soar to incredibly crazy heights, with Legends Arceus and Kirby and the Forgotten World finally getting the love and care that other Nintendo franchises have received on Switch, and hopefully Pikmin can experience this as well. So we know Pikmin 4 has the chance to be successful on Switch, but will it actually release on the platform? In part 2, we'll be analyzing recent rumors and leaks, alongside overall trends to see if there really is a good chance to see Pikmin 4 on Nintendo Switch. I'll tell you the conclusion now. It's an overwhelming yes, so make sure you subscribe so that way when the video drops you can see why that is, and that way you don't get excited over nothing. There's still a lot to talk about. My name is Vantage Emblem, and I hope to see you back for part 2. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe so you don't miss it. Take care.